For a function which I use as often as I do, and which has saved me as much time as it does, the GPU set depth function in GameMaker can be surprisingly hard to explain. At least if you don't already have a specific use for it. But I do think it's a useful function, and as I said, it does save me a lot of trouble, so I think it's time that I try to actually explain what it does. So GPU set depth is a function which was added to GameMaker about a year ago. I want to say it showed up in 2023.8. And it will set the depth or the Z coordinate of sprites that are drawn in 3D space. And that might not sound like much. Um, a lot of people don't use really sprites in 3D space in Game Maker for the reason specifically that it is kind of a pain to control what like depth or what height or what Z value they are drawn with. This is a function that can help with that. So uh, I think I'm going to actually start by popping open a um, popping open a Photoshop window and uh, picking up my drawing pen and. When you draw a sprite in Game Maker, it will uh, Game Maker will build a little internal vertex buffer made out of two triangles for you. So there's going to be triangle one. Uh, there's going to be triangle two. It's going to look something like this. I forget exactly which order um, the uh, like the four corners are connected with the two triangles in, in Game Maker by default. I think it's this. And uh, as with any vertex buffer that you try to try to work with in, in computer graphics. Uh, it's going to have a number of attributes to go with it. One of those is going to be a 3D position, even if you're just making a 2D game. Uh, sprites will still be drawn to the 3D position. Uh, that is going to constitute the X. I'm going to call it X1, Y1. So that's going to be like the upper left of where you draw your um, where you draw your sprite on the screen. Uh, in the opposite corner, you're going to have X2, Y2. So that's going to be the uh, the lower right. But what is going to what is going to be inside the um, the z coordinate here? So when you're drawing stuff in two D in Game Maker, you don't really have to worry about this. If you're drawing stuff in two D, you probably have the z buffer turned off. Um, you probably don't really care about depth beyond just controlling the order in which things are drawn, so that things that are drawn later are just slapped on top of the things that are drawn earlier, like a sticker. As it happens, Game Maker will actually put the depth of uh, the object that is like the root draw event uh, in the Z coordinate in when you draw a sprite or when you draw uh, text or whatever. And again, most of the time when you're just doing 2D stuff in Game Maker, that's fine. You don't really care. But if you are using Game Maker for 3D things like a Madman, and if you do want actually your sprites to occupy like any old position in 3D space, it gets a little bit harder because um. I really don't want to get too deep into it. Uh, the way the depth is handled in sprites when you draw sprites is kind of kind of annoying. Um, if you are if you do what I do and what a lot of other people do and draw all your your three D stuff, your entire three D world through a single like camera object um, using a width statement like this, uh, this is generally what I would recommend because it it gives you more control over the order in which things are drawn, and this means that any sprite that you draw like this will just be drawn with the current depth of obj underscore camera, which isn't really any good to you. Um, if you want, you can use some weird stupid shader tricks, which is what I used to do in the past. Uh, you can also use a matrix transform. So if we were to say something like bar, let's say Z equals, um, and I'm gonna just make these sprites like oscillate up and down. Let's say 50 times uh, cosine of current time divided by a thousand. I'm just gonna see this with X start. And y start so that different objects are like cosigning up and down at, at different rates or like offset from each other ra rather. Uh, you could use a matrix transform uh, we'll um, we'll just use a matrix transform to set the z value here uh, x and y are, are fine and draw sprite general and then when we're done matrix set matrix world matrix built identity, and this is going to cause all these sprites to sign up and down like this. That's uh, that's all right. So they're moving in 3D space now. However, uh, they are now all constituting their own vertex batch, which is something that I generally caution people against losing too much sleep over, but it is at the same time perhaps not something that you want to just like build your entire game around. Um, Having, having a million vertex batch breaks uh, instead of batching your sprites together, which is like the thing that Game Maker is good at doing for you. Uh, so let's get out of there. It would be nice if we could instead just, you know, come back over here when our vertex buffers for our sprites are built and just feed whatever we want to into this, um, into this Z coordinate. 
And that is, um, that is exactly what GPU set depth is for. So if uh, instead of using those, uh, those matrix set matrix, matrix builds for this, if instead we were to just say GPU set depth, uh, that Z value, um, I'm going to actually uh, first old depth can be GPU get depth. Um, it often might be a good idea uh, to reset a value like this when you're done changing it so that whatever's drawn after uh, will be will be drawn at the original depth. Uh, this is not an expensive function, by the way. Uh, this is literally just setting a variable inside the GameMaker runtime. More on that in a minute. Anyway, if I do this, uh, we will now have all of these sprites signing up and down uh, as we had before. But instead of each of these sprites being a different uh, vertex batch because we, we are changing the world matrix, which is a shader like setting. Uh, whenever you change a shader uniform, you, you get a vertex batch break. Uh, we now have all of these sprites being batched together as they would be in 2D. And as far as we're concerned right now, the result that it produces is just as good as if you were to use a matrix transform to offset the height of all these sprites. And uh, if you want to make this look a little bit more interesting, this also will work uh, with my, what I like to call my diorama shader trick. Um, this is a long story short, how all of the uh, sprites that are standing up facing the camera like this are drawn in, in Wizard Ducks, uh, which is uh, the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Obligatory plug for the Steam page for this game, which can be found down in the video description. So for a uh, for an example of what I'm talking about, uh, let me actually just run run the Wizard X project. And if you look closely, uh, this this game is a is a combination of 2D and 3D. You can find examples of where this is used all over the place in this project. And uh, some examples might be things like uh, collectible items like this are just 2D 2D sprites which have a little uh, little oscillation on them. Um, if you uh, there are some moments, certain animations, certain character animations will involve playing with the um, like the 3D depth of character sprites and stuff like that. Um, I believe there's a couple more down this way. These guys, when they see you, they will do a little hop. GPU set depth right there. Come back here, mister. Things like these pickup items, these, uh, these currency items, uh, they have a little oscillation up and down on them. And there can be quite a lot of them uh, in this case, which would be definitely a, uh, a place where you don't really want to have a million a million vertex batch breaks for each one of these. And um, that is uh, that is but a few examples of what I use this for in a game with this graphical style. So this is a very simple function. It really doesn't get much more simple than this. Um, there is one thing I would like to address before I end it off though, which is the name of this function. Uh, for the most part, functions in Game Maker that start with GPU set will invoke a vertex batch break because they, they will affect some part of the draw state, whether that's a shader, uniform, or a um, like some other setting, like uh, the culling setting or the blend mode or whatever. Um, GPU set depth is, I believe, the only function of this, like with this type of name, that will not do that. Uh, it is perhaps not the best named function in Game Maker. I would have rather called it something like draw set depth but it is possible that um, this calling it something like this might have given people the wrong idea of like whether or not it affects draw order or something like that, the way that regular depth in Game Maker does. Um, functions that begin with draw set in Game Maker will uh, will also mostly not invoke a vertex batch break. Uh, draw set lighting, I believe, will. I think draw set swift anti aliasing level will, but I don't use that function because I don't use shockwave flash files in games. That's just something that I wanted to uh, to point out. Like I said, GPU set depth is one of the uh, cheapest functions in Game Maker to, that you could possibly call. Like on the order of math functions or, um, well really math, math functions uh, in terms of the swiftness because all it does is set a value inside the runtime somewhere. Anyway, I hope that this video was useful to you. Uh, like I said, this can be a weird one to explain because what it does won't be useful to most people, but to the few people who can make use of it, it can be a, a really big deal. So if you're one of those people, I hope this saves you as much trouble as it saved for me. I'm gonna end this off here. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this little demo, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of this video. There's really not many changes I made to this one, huh? Anyway, it'll be there. 
I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, weird shader stuff, weird 3D stuff, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Theatro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Black Alien for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.